Thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Monkey Boy Presents, the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, and today I'm happy to bring you issue number 69, Detective Chimp. And this is another pretty obscure character, another one, honestly, I was pretty surprised to see as a part of the collection. Uh, another one, though, that I'm very pleasantly surprised by. He is one of the smallest figures in the collection, if not the smallest figure in the collection. And that, honestly, is part of the reason I'm so impressed with this figure. If you are aware of this character, it's probably from the animated series Batman the Brave and the Bold that was on Cartoon Network for a few seasons, where he made, I believe, a couple of appearances. But other than that, he hasn't really strayed outside of the comic book world, and even there he's, I think, considered pretty obscure, having only appeared in a few different comics. But, of course, they are very um, important issues that he's appeared in, and we'll cover most of those in the magazine, which will tell us everything we need to know about the detective chimp here, also known as Bobo the Chimp, and then we'll take a look at the figure itself, covering the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's a very impressive figure, honestly. I really like this guy a lot. As I said, he's really small, which is impressive to me, and you'll see that very shortly. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy issue number 69 of the DC Comics Superhero Collection by Eagle Moss, Detective Chimp. First up, the character section. And this is where we meet a chimp named Bobo, who was living in Equatorial Africa when he was captured by an animal trainer named Fred Thorpe. Thorpe noticed almost immediately there was something special about this particular chimp and decided to adopt him rather than sell him to the circus who had hired him. Bobo learned later on that his super intelligence had actually come from an alien meteorite that he was exposed to, the same meteorite that had given the evil Gorilla Grodd and his troop of gorillas their super intelligence. As Bobo became smarter, he also began to help around the animal sanctuary more and more, taking care of the other animals that were there, and even learning how to communicate with most of them. Bobo's life changed forever after his owner, Fred Thorpe, was murdered by a corrupt police deputy, who then tried to frame Bobo for the crime. Sheriff Chase and his new deputy Bobo the Chimp went on many different adventures together and teamed up with other heroic animals, including the World War II hero Rex the Wonder Dog. Not long after gaining these amazing new abilities, Sheriff Chase and Bobo the Chimp were approached by the United States government, who wanted them to help head up a brand new division of the National Security Council known as the BAA. of his friend and partner Sheriff Chase, Bobo opened a private detective agency and also played the stock markets to make a small private fortune for himself. A 
After disappearing from the world and drowning his sorrows in a bottle for a couple of decades, Bobo was approached by a superheroic group of mystics who were trying to stop the Spectre from destroying all magic in the universe. Bobo chose to stay with this group of mystics and magicians after they saved the universe during the Infinite Crisis, and the group became the latest iteration of a legendary team of mystic champions known as Shadow Pact. Next, we look at a couple of Bobo's classic stories. First up, Green Lantern and the Flash, Guerrilla Warfare. And this team up found Green Lantern and the Flash taking on Hector Hammond and Gorilla Grodd, who were yet again trying to take over the world using their incredible telepathic and telekinetic powers. In the end, they actually proved to be too much for Hal Jordan and Wally West, so they called for help in the form of BAA agent Bobo the Chimp, also known as Detective Chimp, and he comes to their aid along with Rex the Wonder Dog and the two animal heroes end up saving the day ultimately in what is considered one of the greatest team-ups in all of DC history. We also have the Helmet of Fate, Detective Chimp number one. And this story opens with the sharply witty and satirical Detective Chimp attempting to rebuild his life and open a brand new private detective agency when suddenly from out of the sky falls the magical Helm of Naboo, which transforms the wearer into the mystical hero known as Dr. Fate. And this is basically his many misadventures with this helmet, which ends up giving him more headaches than it does help him in his quest to solve crimes around the city. Ultimately, he discards it, but not after wearing it for a little while and actually superhero going around as a simian Dr. Fate. Bobo's Friends and Foes section features some of his closest friends, including Sheriff Chase, Fred Thorpe, and Rex the Wonder Dog. Finally, the iconography section features some of the other superheroic beasts in the DCU. This includes beasts like Kanga, which were domesticated by the Amazons of Themyscira and used as steeds in sporting events and battle. The flying horse named Winged Victory, which serves as steed for the heroic Shining Knight. We also learn more about Rex the Wonder Dog and some of his adventures during World War II and while serving with the BAA. Superman's best friend, Crypto the Super Dog. And finally, the battle horse known as Thunderer, proud steed of the new god, Solitary Lonar. Here we have Detective Chimp, Bobo the Detective Chimp, and man, another great figure in the line, another one that I was not expecting, as I've sort of already said, I was, you know, astonished when I saw him announced, it's another Hitman sort of incident here, where I didn't expect a whole lot, and I'm just blown away by this figure, not only the scale, I mean, you can see how small he is, there's my thumb, and there's his little spyglass, or magnifying glass, whatever you want to call it. He's just so tiny and so exquisitely detailed. Everything on this guy is just amazing. The sculpt is incredible, all the way down to the wrinkles on his pants. He's got the bare feet, and they did every toe, the opposable thumbs. He's got wrinkles. He has fur. Uh, the pattern on the jacket. Gosh, I mean everything. He has pockets on the jacket, he has patches on the elbows. Love that pattern, and it's a sculpted pattern. It's not just painted on, it is sculpted on. 
both hands have something interesting going on. He's holding a pipe in this one, and a spyglass in this one, and the face is another great head sculpt. Love his eyes, they're just fantastic. They look very simian. I just, I'm blown away, quite honestly, by this guy. I think, in my humble opinion, he is one of the best figures in the line. He's up there with Hawkman, he's up there with Scarecrow, he is, I think, really, really nice. Talk a little bit more about him with some better pictures in just a moment. Detective Chip stands atop the classic DC logo, and the underside of his base features his name in a couple languages along with serial number. And so you can get an idea of how small this guy is, here he is next to a LEGO Star Wars Clone Wars Clone Trooper. And finally, so you can get some perspective, here's a Bic lighter and a can of soda, and you can see how diminutive this figure really is. And so you can get an idea of him with some other Eagle Moss figures, here he is with the Penguin, who was the smallest figure in the line until Detective Chimp. Here he is with some of the other detectives in the DC Universe. A shot of him teaming up with the Flash and Green Lantern to take down Gorilla Grodd. And finally a group shot with some of the mystical characters that he's either encountered or teamed up with in the DC. The Detective Chimp here is one of the best figures in the line, I think, and maybe it's because he caught me by surprise, it was another one that I really didn't know a lot about, another one I was just completely astonished that they announced, and I just can't get over how detailed and well done this figure really is. We'll start and might just even finish with the good. Pretty much everything on this guy, can I just say that? He's outstanding. The sculpt is superb. The paint job is magnificent. I love the pose. I, I love everything on this guy, really. Uh, the sculpt is great, all the way down to the toes. They did every knuckle, every crinkle, every wrinkle, every little bit of fur that you can see is fantastically sculpted. The pants are a great color. I love that dark wash on them and how they look dirty and worn. Uh, I love the tweed jacket and the detail there, the vest underneath that, that sweater vest, the collared shirt underneath that, the bright red tie, all the different patterns, all the different colors, the palette, uh, the color palette on this guy is just fantastic, honestly. Um, the jacket, of course, you can see that pattern is not just painted, it's actually sculpted on the figure like the pattern of the wings on both Hawkman and Hawk Girl. I just think that's an outstanding detail. And he has the patches on the elbows, there are buttons on the cuffs of the jacket that I think are fantastic. There are buttons and buttonholes on the front of the jacket where it buttons together. His hands are outstandingly detailed, just like his feet. Knuckles are there, wrinkles are there, fingernails are there. Uh, he has the pipe in his right hand that is sculpted completely, and not only that, but there's tobacco packed inside of the bowl of the pipe. It's fantastic little details like that, and it's a different color to boot. And the other hand is also fantastic. I love the fact that he's holding his spyglass. It's got a nice metallic paint on it, but it's not too metallic. It, it's dull. It's perfect. You can see the handle even has some details on it, and I love how he's sort of only holding it with a couple of fingers. It, it's just really, really superb. Also, the hat, his little detective hat, it, it's great. I love the homage to Sherlock Holmes with the look of this character, both in the books and, of course, with this statue. And the head sculpt is outstanding. Love it, love it, love it. He looks like a chimp. Love the muzzle, love his nostrils, love the big ears, and I just think uh, everything about it is fantastic, especially his eyes. His eyes are great. They're sort of haunting looking and I love the blue color that they gave them. He's just one of the best figures in the line, I think. The bad. For me, honestly, nothing. There's some minor paint bleeding here and there, and I have heard the argument made that it would be nice if he had some translucent plastic inside the ring of the magnifying glass. Honestly, I don't care. I don't miss it. I really think this guy is near perfect. The ugly. The only thing to really watch out for is the spyglass, the magnifying glass. It's the weakest point on the character. Uh, it's small, it's thin, it's easy to bend or easy to break, so that's the only thing to really watch out for. Overall, man, I love this character. I love this figure. I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's another one that I was not expecting. Caught me by complete surprise. 
I love the obscure guys, I guess. I really do have an affinity for them. He looks fantastic with the other characters on the shelf, believe it or not, especially when we start getting into more of the mystical uh, characters, the more magical characters, more members of the Shadow Pact, like the Phantom Stranger and Blue Devil and some of those characters. But until then, I think he's really cool. If you want someone to break up your shelf a little bit, and you want a more obscure, fun character, and you want the smallest figure in the line, I definitely think that Detective Chimp is worth picking up and adding to your collection. And I hope you guys have enjoyed my review of Detective Chimp. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please stay tuned for a quick teaser trailer of the next figure in the line, issue number 70. It's a big one. It's another powerhouse in the DC Universe, another female, and another member of Superman's family. So please stay tuned for that. As always, I'm your host, the Monkey Boy, a.k.a. J to his friends. Thanks for watching.